East Poly School Spectrum, reaching you live from the beautiful hills of Ibiakura and here in Akwaibom State. And in this part, I've been joined by a guest in the studio to talk about the Electoral Arts Amendment Bill, the processes it has been through, the provisions like you have seen, and of course, uh, the big question, why is the president yet to sign the Electoral Arts Amendment Bill, or will he ever sign, or why is he not signing? Uh, I'm talking about uh, a, pop, a political affairs analyst uh, in the person of Supreme Uh Welcome you greatly to the show again. Thank you very much, yeah. Otto Obasi. No, nice and, uh, to see you again. Happy Valentine. In oh, Arias. In Arias. Okay. Thank you very much. You're uh, with the issues with the Electoral Act Amendment Bill seems to, you know, sometimes it looks as if it's, it, it, it's going down and another time a group will come up and then say the president has to assent to this. Uh, what do you make of uh, the president's silence or his, uh, the period of wait that Nigerians are waiting? I will not be able to make anything meaningful out of the silence of the president or president mm. being silenced. But one thing I will hold the National Assembly responsible for is this. We have a constitution that has laid down the process mm. of passing a bill to become a law. Mm -hmm. So we, a president, uh, uh, refuse accent to sign the bill into law. Mm -hmm. The National Assembly vetoes. There is, there is a lay down process. So that is the process we should be looking at now. The process too has stipulated how many days the president will have to, you know, uh, wait on a bill before giving accent. Now that the bill was returned to the National Assembly, stating some reasons, one of the reasons being a high cost of, you know, heating up the polity and all of that. We have to look at what does the National Assembly, what role does the National Assembly has to play? Are you, if they are you giving that, up on the possibility of the president assenting to this bill? Or now, do you feel the president would never assent to this bill? Now, the president wasn't asking for more time to review or go through the bill. Mm. It, it wasn't. He returned the bill to the National Assembly stating few reasons why this cannot come up at this instance. Okay. Now, it is left for National Assembly. If they believe that, that the Electoral Amendment Act is, is for the overall good of Nigerians. It is left for them to follow the procedures. Now, if the veto, if the president declined, accent the bill, what next? Well, what truth what is, option the, do they The president have? has not declined accent to the bill. Uh -huh. Emphatically, he said on one of his media rounds uh -huh. this year that if the clause of the direct primaries is brought out, is taken down, that he's going to assent. He now, what is, the, what is the cost of conducting a, a direct primaries? Of what burden does that constitute to the national budget or state budget? The, the when every political party down. is an independent party, they have their own budget and they have their own uh, way of raising their revenue. Mm. It is not going to be the burden of INEC can only play what we call a supervisory no. role. Presently, the, the direct primary clause was taken down. An agreement done by both the National Assembly, that's uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate, and uh, it was retransmitted to the president, and Nigerians are waiting for Athens. Or maybe he's declined because he has the liberty to de still decline on, on Athens. No, well, on that note, you will see that the National Assembly, sorry for using this word, is, a, is like a, a bulldog without a, you know, without a teeth. They can, they can only bark and not bite. Because if there are laid down process, that if the president, you know, so 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 dates, or days should be given to the president, and if the president is not obliged to this, there's another you know leeway of getting this done. Now, I think they should be looking at the second option by now, if they believe that this is for the overall good of Nigerians. But for uh, for, for 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 us to say let's wait for the president, it seems uh, it seems like we are at the mercy of the president. It doesn't look as if we know what we are doing, and then we are working with time frame. Hmm. Do you understand? It doesn't appear as if we are strategic planners, as if as a country we are running with time. Honestly speaking, if there's any generation that have the need for time, is this generation. So if we are playing with time, waiting for the president, probably when he will come and you know uh, sign the bill or may not sign the bill, that's when everybody will now think of second option. It doesn't really, really make sense. It doesn't really show that the National Assembly is really saving the interest of the nation. Well, if you're just joining in, this is Political Spectrum, reaching you live from the beautiful hills of Ibrakuran. And we are talking about Electoral Act Amendment Bill, 
why the president is yet to assent to the bill or whether or not he is going to assent to the bill. You know, Nigerians are holding him to his words that he said if the direct clause, the clause of the direct primaries is taken down, that he assures Nigerians that he's going to give assent. But as we stand, uh, a lot of uh, issues are being raised in Nigeria's uh, PDP governor's forum are saying the president must assent to the bill, and the whole lot appears to be depending on this particular act. And we're still here in the studio with uh, Mr. Supreme Mokun, a political face analyst. And uh, I would just like to ask you this question. As an analyst, in your viewpoint, why do you think uh, the president might possibly refuse assent to this particular bill with all the provisions therein? There are many theories in political science, but I will pick up one, what we call the group theory. Mm. Analyze politics to be a struggle. You understand? Mm. Uh, then an outcome of struggle. So people struggle in the system, and there are tools where in which they use the struggling within this political framework. One of them is, uh, could be called uh, a kind of lobbying. Mm. You know, he's an, he's an approved tool in the, within the political system to use in achieving, you know, uh, some goals in terms of getting a bill like this to become a law. So for the president to decline an accent, I will still go back to the procedures of getting these things done. What are the procedures in the National Assembly? It is clearly stated. You review your bills, first reading, second reading, third reading, you pass it, you put everything together, forward it to the president. The president has the right to minute on it because of this, because of that. And then they have to be what? They have to be disagreement and agreement, and then this bill becomes a law. But when you look at the bill now, you look at the possibility of you know, getting everything achieved in this bill before the election, year, before the actual election date, you now see that we are not to, to we barely have one year. Okay, view. now that, that, that's a provision that has just been introduced mm. now that the money for election should be released to INEC a year before the end. We, we, we are running out of time as it is mm. now. Peradventure, this bill is, uh, is given assent by the president. Mm. Do you think it can still be applicable? It can still be, you know, put into this particular electoral process? Now, understand that the challenges of uh, the, the, the present state of Nigeria is not because there are no lofty policies in place. There are lofty policies, there are lofty programs, there are lofty projects on ground. Mm. But the problem has been implementation. Mm. So if the bill was like passed into law, before now they would have re-looked at the bill to see some lacunas, to see where the challenges will be. Probably they would have started some level of implementation, like the electronic or any technological device, according to one of the clauses there that says that it will be adopted by INIC for accreditation of voters. Now, it, I think it is time that we would have tested the machines over and over again, mm -hmm. take it to the remote area where they are likely to have network challenges and see we, how these things will function and what you know, solutions they can provide before the time. But right now, if the bill is, is still being delayed on the desk of the president, mm -hmm. finally, if, if and only if it will be signed mm -hmm. for or against that is when we start battling with, you know, acquisition of this device, you know, alternative, how to test it, how to see it work, which I tell you, I was there in the general, uh, in the last 2015 general election. I happened to serve as one of the, you know, electoral officers. I know the challenges. I think where I worked was quite challenging. I was beaten up because I stood my ground that the election results sheet must be filled and accordingly. So I know what I'm saying. At that time, I spent two days in that place, no food. So... I know the challenges I, I, I witnessed using that uh, card reader. So by that, you are saying that even if the president assents to this bill, it won't be implemented this particular time. Even if it will be implemented, I tell you the problem that will come up will be more than even the solution that the, uh, uh, whatever uh, solution that the bill was trying to provide for. Except one of the things that I would like to see this bill provide for should be direct primaries. Let the people from the beginning It has already decide. been taken out. It's, a, it's already been taken out. Then the bill is beginning to lose. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an option. It's an mm. option. It's not mandatory. It's not compulsory. There's, there's a clause for both uh, direct primaries, they, they, indirect they, primaries, they, and mm. consensus. So whichever one the political parties wants to adopt is solely their, their issue. And then, they, then the country is not really giving their citizens a direction because now if they say a direct primary, it will give the people a direction. They will look up to something that come general election, before the general election takes place, all of them will go out and queue behind a political party of their choice, and then knowing that their voice will start counting there. Like I told you in the last, uh, in, uh, the last program we had, I said, if you have option A as good, option B as querel, 
option B as antelope, who will you vote for? Meanwhile, you are looking for maybe an option of a sheep, and then among the three options, you can't find sheep. So you find out that you go for the wrong option. So it is this clause, this particular section that talks about direct primaries to be conducted by political party that was one of the in thing. Another thing was with direct transition of election results from the polling units electronically. It makes sense. Do you understand? To avoid a lot of manipulation that normally takes place in from, as much from as units that, yeah. to coalition centers. Okay, in as much as that has been approved, mm -hmm. there's still uh, some challenges that some people have pointed out being that uh, some remote areas of the country do not still have network and how would you transmit uh, elect how would you electronically transmit that is exactly what i am saying this world is not without alternative in fact if there's a time of human history that human being has a lot of solutions at hand is this generation so when people are talking about solutions that can actually a problem that can actually have a lasting solution it means that they're not thinking it means that they're not real for example, how is Nigeria? If we cannot subscribe to these uh, 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 network providers, why don't we go to internet? We have Nigeria at one. We can launch it. If they launch internet, if they use satellites and function at the high sea, which of the a remote area in a Ibom state is deeper than the high sea? If somebody uses marine and inside the deep sea is still having network because of their devices and the connectivity that they use, because they're serious minded, which of the remote area in a Ibom state, even in Nigeria, is as deep? as the deepest deep of the sea. You understand? So it's, it's left for us to oblige ourselves and make us the, and be sincere that we want to achieve this goal. And we talk about there are devices that you can go to China now. So, okay, since there's no network in this area, we want this device to tap satellite network directly. Satellite ne network is everywhere. It's just for you to have a device that can actually intercept with that or communicate with that. So you feel, you see that... So we can have, is a, is a solution that we can think, is a problem that we can think solution out in a split of second. And the president talked about high cost of uh, elections and that was the reason he avoided direct primaries. Uh, so bringing all these technological devices, don't you think to also... They have already optioned, when I conducted, when I, in, 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 the, in the 2015 general election that, have, that happened to, you know, uh, partake as one of the electoral officers, we use card reader. So it wasn't today. And I was, be, I was believing that come 2023 election that Nigeria must have been able to strengthen that electronically base when it comes to, you know, uh, election, general elections. By now, the electoral processes would have been what? Would have been computerized. We would have gone a bit far if we are serious-minded people. Do you understand? Election is seen as an activity that happens, you know, in, in a space of four years. And a lot, there are a lot of people, a group of people that has, you know, already programmed their income in this cycle. So they are not looking at the outcomes of the general election. They, everybody is looking at the budget and how they can tap from the budget. And as such, the policies, the outcome begin to suffer so we are not, because we are not serious-minded. If this electronic device we used in 2015, we had an encounter problem then. We had, we had an idea about these network issues. We, had about, uh, we have an idea about this uh, uh, card reader, not picking some cards and all of that. I believe 2019 general election, some of these problems would have been strengthened. And then come 2023, we would have been near perfect. So when they are, you know, dragging their feet about some certain things, it shows on seriousness on the part of our leaders not to build a better Nigeria. And probably there is no way you talk about a better Nigeria if you don't talk about transparent leadership recruitment process, which is boiled down to what? Election. And then if the process of leadership recruitment that is, you know, uh, put on INEC is, is not properly coordinated, then you can imagine it's still bad will still occur. And it still it gives way to what? Those are the, you know, the leaders with lack of capacity in the form of human beam you call the handicaps. You understand? Because when you have a steel bed, the child is likely to come to bed or to life without leg or without hand. There must be some form of, uh, you know, malfunctioning. Do you understand? So when you have, when INEC is not properly coordinated and are not given chance to, like, implement what they're supposed to be and test run it over time and, and figure out these, you know, errors and then try to correct it over time before the general election to see that, one of my lecturers told me, Supreme, when you are preparing for exams, prepare 100% because tension and other things will reduce whatever that you've read to like 60, 70%. And that is a pass map. But when you study 50%, tension has already taken out 30 or 20%, you certainly fail. So to what extent, to what extent has INEC 
prepared itself? And to what extent has the federal government put everything in place, starting from the law that guarantees some basic activities and function of INEC to funding on time? And then has already put said in this that place. It's so, not release its timetable until this particular act has been signed. Now, what, how do you think that will affect the forthcoming election? It will affect because if INEC has already put down their uh, clause now, that they will not release the election timetable until this act is signed into law. It means that it means that the activities of INEC is dependent on this act now. It will determine whether they will go for to, for any country to ask for electronic device because as long as Nigeria is concerned, where do we get one? So we need to go and seek for help from outside the country to manufacture this device and then configure it in a way and manner that will suit the environment here. And then, if that is not done, with time where this thing can be test run and this error noticed and then try to like provide solution to it, then be rest assured that the general election will be a steel bed. And that will still give bed to the kind of uh, incapacitated leaders that we are having today. And then uh, forget about the better Nigeria as long as this is still in place. It's not like a cause. Do you understand? It is a reality because you cannot sow uh, 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 apple and then you want to go and reap like coconut. You understand? So we must be realistic. A lot of people out there will be saying, God forbid, I'm saving a living God. And I ask them a question. God will still be God if you don't brush your mouth. If you brush your mouth well and smell good, God will still what? When you plan a country and you tie the road and you have constant lights, God is still, if you don't tie the road, you have holdups everywhere. Like I bought fuel the other day in one of the first stations, I don't want to mention them, and then it happens that they sold 20 liters of water for me, and that almost collapsed my engine. God is still God. So yeah. that's the country where we find ourselves, where things are not done in a coordinated way. And the same thing with INEC now. This bill is, is, is paramount in the life of Nigerians well, that will determine the way out yeah. into a good leadership that can as well affect the life of Nigerians in terms of what? A better society. So if you are joking with this, then what hope do we have for the future? Okay, the governor, PDP governors forum have actually come together to put up a number of statements that they want uh, the federal government of Nigeria to act upon immediately. And uh, before you joined us on the show, we played that. So I would like you to take a look at it and then uh, we'll continue on this. Please stay. Uh, thanks for staying with us. Yes, Mr. Supreme, I'll point back to you. Uh, could you think, uh, just uh, uh, on a very fast note, the president is waiting for another 30 days before it actually declares uh, uh, maybe assent or maybe not tell the Nigerians its, its position on the Electoral Act? Remember the other time the National Assembly had to put up a reminder that, it, uh, that the 30 days has elapsed. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't think that the president is, being the, is giving the needed attention in these regards. Because if this bill bothers him too, even if he is going to decline, you know, accent to this bill, he should come out and say it and then give another direction. And then let's engage national, the National Assembly for an option, for a conclusion on this so that the umpire call INEC, can go to the field and see what they can do for themselves and start planning for the general election. But right now, waiting for the president, giving the president another 30 days, who knows, he might wait to the last days and probably a, a reminder. I am saying that based on the last scenario. On the last so, scenario. Okay. And until then, the, the House, uh, Senate can actually virtue his decision because he has not come up to say, I'm declining no. assent or I'm giving assent. Okay, until then, the, let the National Assembly look at their procedures and see what other alternative do they have. Okay. If, they, if the president was, uh, you know, given the first 30 days and then he's given another 30 days, do they have to wait to the end of the 30 days? Or is there anything they can do? It's up to them. So if they bear the burden of saving the Nigerians, they should do something. Well, uh, that's the thoughts of uh, Mr. Supremo Kuhn, a political affairs analyst. He believes that the Senate uh, lawmakers should look at the Constitution and maybe find another way about it and not have to wait for the president for another 30 days to either decline or give assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Well, that's our show for today. While we keep our eyes open on that particular spec to see if the president will actually decline assent or will consent or will give assent. This is Electro Actor Mimem Bill. Until tomorrow when Political Spectrum returns, my name is Otobasi Tom. Bye for now.